Hi, my name is Megan DaCosta. I'm a product application specialist for the grills, registers, and diffusers product line at Price Industries. Today, I'll be focusing on a new tool we developed for Revit. So the tool is called the Ripple HVAC Toolkit. You can access this tool through the Price website by simply going to Resources, Software, and then the Engineer Toolkit. Here it'll take you to a landing page where we have all our engineering software is available. By clicking on the Ripple HVAC tools, it'll give you access to download the Ripple HVAC toolkit. Once you've downloaded the Ripple HVAC toolkit, you will notice that it gives you access to several different tools. Today, we'll be focusing on the Air Terminal Selection and Placement tool. When you click the Air Terminal Placement tool, you will see that a window opens, and I really want to highlight how simple it is to automatically place diffusers in just two clicks of a button. Simply select your space, scroll down to place air terminals, and in a matter of seconds, it'll place diffusers right into your space. Now I want to backtrack a little bit and explain how we were able to make this selection so quickly. So when you first open the tool, it'll download three things into your project. The first will be all the families that are available to be placed in the auto placement tool. The second is your air terminal tags. So feel free to revise the graphics for either of these as needed. The only thing we ask is that the name of the family and the type are not revised. This is what the add-in calls upon, so if these are changes, it wouldn't be able to connect. The last piece is your, the last piece is your schedules. So it will import a every instance schedule that will include information about every single diffuser that is in your project as well as a print schedule, which is a more consolidated version that is more typical to what you would see on your plans. In order for the tool to place diffusers within your space, it simply needs two inputs. The first is it needs a space, and the second is it needs your airflows. So under the mechanical flow, you'll see your specified airflow, your return airflow, and your specified exhaust airflow. These can simply be imported through Excel through various other third-party tools. Once you have selected your spaces, you want to select the type of diffuser you want to use for your supply applications. So you have the option between your square plaque diffuser, your square cone diffuser, and your perforated face diffuser. You can also specify the type of diffusers for a ceiling versus no ceiling application. For no ceiling applications, we have the option of the round cone diffuser, and you can also specify your insertion height, so Revit knows where to insert the diffuser. Within the selection, you can also specify some performance limitations. Here you'll see the option to specify your max CFM per diffuser size, your max noise criteria, as well as your max total pressure. So for example, if I wanted to specify, I don't want any of the diffusers to exceed 30 NC, you'll notice that the other values are back calculated. Alternatively, we could also specify the max total pressure, and you see it adjusts the other values. For demo purposes, I'm going to keep it to 25 NC. So you'll notice that we have two red rows. A red row indicates that we don't want to incorporate this line in our selection process. To have a value be considered, I simply need to remove the non-numeric values, and you can see it is now a selectable option. Now, to invalidate a row, all you need to do is any non-numeric value. Often we don't go above a 12 inch radius due to crowded ceilings. 
So you can make the same type of selections for your returns as well as for your exhaust. Often for returns, regardless of performance, we often just select the largest size, but this is completely customizable uh, to the preference of the user. Once we have our spaces selected, you can click Add Selected Spaces, and you'll notice that you'll see all the spaces in the tool with the specified supply, return, and exhaust. If there is no CFM within the room, then it simply won't place a diffuser there. If you want to select diffusers that are on different floors or levels or in different areas, you can simply highlight the other section and also select Add Selected Spaces. Then you can place air terminals. The logic behind the tool is it takes a characteristic length and ensures that you have that 50 feet per minute throw at your occupied zone. It also divides your CFM according to the area within the project. So we'll take a complex space and simplify it into a simpler space. So once the diffusers have been placed, you will notice that the diffusers automatically snap to a grid if a grid is detected. Here we can see that because there was no ceiling that it placed our round cone diffusers and spaced the diffusers out evenly within the space. So the tool isn't limited to doing placing diffusers just at a right angle. It can also do spaces at an angle as well as curves. So by simply selecting the spaces here and pressing place air terminals, we can see that it will always align the geometry of the diffuser along the grid or the geometry of the wall. Here we can see that it didn't just place the diffuser directly in the center, it ensured proper alignment with the wall and the ceiling grid. In this example, where there is no ceiling grid, it just aligned the diffusers to be parallel to the lines of the wall. It's also able to do curved applications. So the tool works by taking complex shapes and simplifying them down into more basic rectangles. With that being said, the tool is designed to handle standard spaces. So your classrooms, your office spaces, it's designed to be able to automatically place the 80% of your project so you can focus on that 20% um, and that's where your big time savings will come. So here, a simple curve, it is able to place your diffuser, but as you get into more complex curves and shapes, then it's best to manually place the diffusers out. Now that we have placed all our diffusers, we're going to take a look at the schedules. So the very first one is the every instance schedule. The every instance schedule you can see here has information about every single diffuser that is currently placed in the project. Here you can see we also have performance for the different tools. The value here is if you are to change the CFM for a specific diffuser, you will also see that your performance auto updates. You also have the ability to change the limits for your NC. So here we currently have it set to anything above 30 NC will give this red warning. This can be manually adjusted by just going to conditional formatting. It's also important to note that by changing the design airflow, it won't automatically replace the diffusers in your space and it won't automatically resize your inlet. We also can utilize several sorting and grouping tools within Revit to better utilize the every instance schedule. So if we go to sorting and grouping and then sort by and select space type and uncheck itemize every instance. Here we may see our shower room and decide that all diffusers that are within the shower room we actually want these to be aluminum rather than steel. So now this change will apply to all diffusers that are in 
any shower room. Another benefit of the grouping and filtering is to sort by your air terminal host. Here we can see we have an example of a wood panel ceiling. This is a prime example where we may know that we want a custom finish rather than white. We can also utilize the accessories. So here we have a gypsum ceiling. And here we may know that we actually want a lay-in application. So we're gonna select a lay-in plaster frame. To go back to the itemized list, simply sort by none and re-click itemize every instance. Now, as you may see, this is a lot of information and not one that you would typically want to put on our plans. So that's why we also have a print schedule. In order to populate your print schedule, simply go back to your air terminal selection and placement tool. Go to tools in the top left corner and then automatic schedule separator. By clicking your automatic schedule separator, it'll automatically add tags, include your count, manufacturer, model, and typically more pertinent information that you would find in a print schedule. It's important to note that this is completely customizable. You can change the names of any of the columns. You can delete columns, add columns, customize them as needed to match your company standards. The next thing to know is although we would absolutely love if 100% of the families in your project were price families, but we're aware that isn't always the case. So I'm gonna hop back to our plan view and show that we can also incorporate non-price diffusers into our schedule. So here we have an off-brand drum diffuser I'm just going to drag and drop into the project. In order for the drum diffuser to be incorporated into our schedule, we can simply go to Tools and push shared parameters to all air terminals. By clicking this, it ensures that all the shared parameters that are in our schedule will now be incorporated into every single air terminal family that is currently in our project. Once all the parameters have been pushed, you'll simply get a notification that says parameters added. Okay. So here you can see we have now gotten our pop-up window that says parameters added. We can press OK. And if we go back to the print schedule, to update it, go tools, automatic schedule separator. We'll now see that we have the drum louver in there with the updated tag. And then you can manually map all those parameters over to populate the rest of the fields. To really highlight how powerful this tool is, I'm going to delete all the diffusers we've placed so far. and I'm gonna now automatically place diffusers along the entire project. So this project has three stories. And here you can see they are all empty. Now by opening back up the air terminal selection and placement tool, we can scroll right to the bottom and say select all spaces. Here you'll see the entire list of all the spaces we have in the project and simply press place air terminals. Now placing diffusers in a job of this size typically can take hours if not days if not over a week and we've simplified the process to go down from hours down to minutes.
So once the diffusers have been placed into your project, you are still able to adjust the position of the diffusers in order to avoid any other obstructions in your ceiling, whether it be due to lighting or sprinklers or smoke detectors that may be within your ceilings. And just like that, it has now placed all the diffusers in your project on all three levels, saving you countless hours and time. If you ever have any additional questions about how to use the tool, feel free to go to the help section. Here you can click on video tutorials, which will take you directly to the Ripple YouTube page, or you can go to the about to just find information about the current version you are using. If new updates are available, you will be notified on opening Revit that a new version is available for download. That concludes our introduction to the Air Terminal Selection Placement Tool. If you have any other questions, feel free to reach out to the GRD at priceindustries.com or myself, Megan DaCosta.